Thank you, brother. Amen. Yeah, Bro- Brother Drake, I tell you what, I appreciate him. He's something. We ain't never figured out what, but he's something. He, uh, he told me the other day, uh, other Sunday night, he said to me, I came in, he said, I had a dream. I got a little bit too much power up here somewhere. I don't know if y'all need to. Okay, but anyway. He said, uh, I had a dream. He said, I dreamed I was a Catherine. And I was just rolling in money. It must have been those Catherines in Trap Hill, because those Catherines in Rhonda sure ain't got it. Amen. Those Catherines in Rhonda were so poor, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they ate pork and beans, mostly the pork. Matter of fact, the Catherines in Rhonda were so poor on Sunday afternoons, they went to Kentucky Fried Chicken and licked other people's fingers. Amen. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it just ruined your lunch, didn't it? But uh, I uh, told that story one time. My mama drove me for several years preaching. Mama didn't like all my humor. I'm sure God straightened her out by now, but she, uh, she didn't like all that. She said to me, she said, Boy, I'll have you know we wasn't never that poor. But we, was, we was pretty poor. My daddy, uh, some of you may remember those little sparklers you'd get. You know, you light them and then, and then fizz. We had an old wood heater and it had holes in it. And Daddy would buy those sparklers, stick them in the wood heater, and light them and tell us, boys, there's a spaceship about to blast off. So I'm glad to be here today. Amen. There's nothing wrong with laughing a little bit. And uh, I, I appreciate my friend, Brother Don Hudson. Uh, I thank God for Don. We've been friends, real close friends, for the last four or five years. And, and I appreciate the preacher having enough confidence in me letting me stand this morning. And I appreciate all of you. I just want to say that you've been good to us. Uh, we've been coming around here for about five years, and I appreciate the kindness that you've shown me and my wife. I, I thank God for you, and you have been a blessing to me. And just pray for us in these days, if you would. Psalm 92 this morning, Psalm 92. I'm going to read actually from two places, Psalm 92, and then also Numbers chapter 11. Psalm 92 and Numbers chapter 11. And I do appreciate each and every one of you. I do appreciate Brother Drake. I like to pick at him a little bit, but I thank God for him. Um, this morning, uh, what I want to do, if you've never been with me in a service, or if you're not familiar, this is my scripture. It's King James Bible, just like yours, but that's the way I have to read it, 46 fonts. <clears throat> it don't bother me. Don't let it bother you, okay? I mean, that's just the way it is. All right, so, uh, so, so I want to read Psalm 92 and verse number 10. And then Numbers 11 and verse number 8. Psalm 92, 10. The Bible said, But my horn shalt thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. And then Numbers chapter number 11. This speaks of the manna. Verse number 8. And the people went about and uh, gathered it and ground it into meals or beat it uh, in a mortar and uh, baked it in pans, and made cakes of it, and the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. Our Heavenly Fathers, we stand this morning in an impossible place without you. You said in the book of John, without me you can do nothing. Now I need your help this morning, and I thank you Lord for these almost 40 years you've let me preach the Word of God and use me, and help me one more time this day to help the people In Jesus' name, amen. The word fresh is only found four times in your King James Bibles, and two of those times it is associated with the words fresh oil. And there was a famous preacher that preached a famous message entitled Fresh Oil. I'm not going to preach that this morning, although some of the same things would apply here. When we're talking about fresh oil this morning, what we're talking about in the Christian's life, oil is a type of the Holy Spirit. And we're talking about a touch from God. Brother Wishon uh, hit it when he prayed this morning. What we need is a touch of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we need that this morning. So I want to talk about having fresh oil in your life this morning. Having fresh oil in your life. Now there's really two things. Number one, uh, this speaks of the Spirit of the Lord. In Psalm 92 and verse number 10, he said, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. You say, well, preacher, how in the world do I be anointed with the Holy Spirit of God? Well, that comes through prayer and fasting. You ought to pray every day. Now, you know, that don't mean uh, three or four hours a day. If you can do that, that's wonderful. I thank God that you can do that. But you know, Paul used the word prayers with the S on it in the New Testament. 
That means you should pray several times a day that you would be guided by the Spirit of God. Now the Bible said in Ephesians chapter 5, verse number uh, 18, the Bible said, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit. That's not a suggestion. That's a command that we as believers be filled with God. And to be filled with the Spirit, we must stay in tune with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, uh, you have, we have piano at home, and that thing gets out of tune, it, it don't sound right. You know, it's got to be tuned every once in a while. And the Christian life, we must have fresh oil every day in our life. We must have a fresh anointing of God. Now, when you get saved, you get the Holy Spirit. He lives in you. He goes with you all the way until the day you die. But let me say this morning that you still need that fresh touch of God. You need, and, and here's a good rule. I don't do this all the time, but I tell you, when I do it, it makes me live closer to God. When you get out of the bed every morning, about every three hours, you ought to bow your head. If you're, even if you're on the job, if you're at a desk behind a computer, or if you're uh, out in the field, wherever you are, if you're a mechanic, you're under a car, wherever you are, you ought to just breathe this prayer. Holy Spirit, I yield myself to you. And if you do that about every three hours of every day, I'll tell you what it'll do. It'll help you stay in line with the Lord. You'll get fresh oil in your life. Now, you know this, you men know this, especially. Uh, and some ladies do. Some don't realize that there's oil in a car. And some men may not realize it. <laughs> amen. But you've got to change that oil in your vehicle, right? And that's where you fellows are supposed to say amen right there. Amen. And it may be some of you. In, in my case, my wife has to remind me about changing the oil. Amen. You say, well, that's awful. No, a blind man don't have any business changing oil anyway. Amen. He definitely don't have any business driving. Amen. But, uh, I mean, you know, I don't think any of you would ride with me. You say you would, but I don't think you would. But here's the deal. You, you know this about an engine. If you do not keep oil in any type of engine, whether it's a lawnmower, a car, a garden tiller, a garden tractor, whatever it is, that engine will do two things. It'll go to knocking and go to smoking. Now, when God's people go to knocking and smoking, you know that they, and I'm not talking about smoking cigarettes, I'm talking about uh, when they go to smoking, they go to kicking everything. They go to knocking everything. Well, I don't agree with this. I don't agree with the choir. I don't agree with Brother Hudson on this. I don't agree with the deacon board on that. When people go to doing that, they're not having much of a prayer life. They're not praying. They're not staying in tune with God. You say, well, preacher, I just got to take a stand. I don't agree. No, you need to just keep your mouth shut. Amen. If, if, if you're close to the Lord where you ought to be, God will work things out. He don't need you to interfere all the time. Amen. And uh, there's a lot of things in a church you just need to be quiet about. Amen. And let me say this to you. Amen. Uh, even in our own lives, I, uh, we have a bad habit. I have a bad habit of talking too much. God's really been working with me about that. The Bible said a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. Well, we need to be filled with the Spirit of God. There's three ways alcohol will affect the person. Now, God compared wine. Uh, he said, be not drunk with wine. Where is excess? Be you filled with the Spirit. There's three things wine and alcohol do to you. Number one, it'll affect your walk. You ever seen a drunk man try to walk? He staggers into everything. I mean, he falls. You've got to pick him up. You know what I mean? I mean, I remember one time many years ago, my daddy was laying on the side of Highway 268, drunk on the side of the road in the side ditch. And my little, little brother looked up at mama and said, Mama, there's a dead man laying on the side of the road right there. Mama said, ain't no dead man. Said, that's your daddy, drunk in the side ditch. Amen. We went over and got him out and put him in the car. Well, it'll affect your talk. You ever been around anybody under the influence of alcohol? It'll drive you crazy. You know, people get drunk and they don't want anything to do with the preacher until they get drunk. Then they want to call the preacher and get saved ten times. Amen. I'm not making fun of that. I'm just simply saying that's that alcohol. It influences you. Amen. You walk, you talk. And then alcohol will affect a man's thought. You know, there's been a many a man took a gun, pulled a trigger and killed somebody and didn't think about it, they're drunk. Or there's on dope or drugs. I had a letter from a man in, a, in, a, in another state in the penitentiary and he'll be there the rest of his life because under drugs and alcohol he killed somebody. Now here's the thing about that. That's the same way of the Holy Spirit though, it does the opposite. Yeah, when you're filled with the Spirit of God, it'll affect your walk with God. Amen. When you're anointed with fresh oil, people can tell you walk with God. Amen. There's a little lady the other day, uh, and I tell this story. She works in uh, the doctor's office where I, where I go, and, and I didn't realize she was there. I didn't really know who she was. And, uh, and uh, so uh, I, I called there to get an appointment or whatever, and I got talking to that lady, and she was so helpful. And I told my wife, I said, I should know that lady. I should know her from somewhere. I don't know her, but I should know her from somewhere. And finally, they introduced me to her. And then I realized who she was and all that kind of thing. And very good Christian young lady a young person, and I told her pastor about it. I think I told her pastor about it. I said, you know, I appreciate the young people in your church. 
Because that young lady, I could tell she was a Christian even on the phone. Now I'll tell you something, there's a lot of people you can't tell they're Christian. You know that being around them, you know? But listen, when you have fresh oil in your life and you walk with God and you pray, and you need that every day whether you think you do or not. If you don't have a time of prayer every morning, you ought to pray. Amen. Get you a prayer list. Now, I'm not saying you've got to just go down a list and pray routinely, but get you a prayer list and pray every day and have fresh oil in your life. You want to, by the way, this word fresh, you know what it means? It means green or flourishing or prospering. You know how you prosper in the Lord? You're going to have to be filled with the Spirit of God. If you're going to get anything done for God, men or women, amen, you're going to have to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. You're going to have to be prospering. You, you can beat your brains out serving the Lord. And if you're not filled with God, you're not going to get anywhere. Did you know that? You'll be like the drunk man was up on I-75 in Kentucky, ran off the highway and spinning in the cornfields when they found him, and he thought he was in the orange groves in Florida. You see, he's a long way from where he thought he was, you understand? A lot of us sometimes, we're a long way from where we think we are, you know? Uh, our Sunday school lesson this morning was about David, and Nathan looked at David and said, Thou art the man. Sometimes the Holy Spirit looks at us and says, Thou art the man. That ain't too pleasant, is it? But we need that fresh oil in our life. We need that freshness every day with God. Now, I love that old hymn, uh, And He Walks With Me and He Talks With Me and He Tells Me I'm His Own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I tell you, you get talking to God, He'll talk back to you. I'm not weird because God talks to me. Oh, no. I tell you, me and God have some good times together. Amen. You say, preacher, you're weird. No, you call it saved. Amen. I tell you what, hey, listen, for 46 years now, week from Monday will be my birthday, spiritual birthday. I'll be saved 46 years Monday. And it's been a thrill. It's been a good ride. Oh, there's been hard days and trouble and I've suffered some. But I tell you, I've never, never went through what Jesus did or the apostles did. But I'll tell you this, amen, I love it because, you know why? You can talk to heaven and heaven will talk back to you. You know, I can't, I can't get into Washington this morning. I don't know any, but I'm, I know a person or two there, but I'm not going to get anywhere there. But I can get right in the third heaven just immediately. Amen. You know that? Get that fresh oil on your life, that fresh anointing. on one. You say, preacher, I'm so discouraged. I'm so defeated. Let me tell you why. You've not been praying like you should, have you? You've not been praying. You've not been taking things to the Lord in prayer. You've got all kind of trouble in your life, and you take it to everybody except the Lord. Boy, I tell you what, in the last few months, I've had to take some things to the Lord. And I've had to put it in God's hands and just say, God, you just do what you will about it. Amen. It ain't my will, but you do it. I mean, fresh oil, you need that in your life this morning. Now, let me show you this right quick. Did you know this morning that there's seven attributes to the Holy Spirit? When you say, well, preacher, if I get filled with the Lord, uh, what does that mean? That means the Lord controls your life. And that don't mean you're going to go around speaking in a language that we don't understand, Okay. That don't mean you're going to stick your head under the pew and you're going to jump 10 pew. By the way, I, I'm not having anything wrong with shouting and praising God. I was raised up on that kind of stuff. I have no problem with it. But I'm going to say this this morning. That don't necessarily mean you're filled with the Spirit. I've seen some people shout, I don't think they're filled with the Spirit, okay? But I want to tell you this morning, what it does mean is God will control you. But in Isaiah chapter 11, verse number 2, you don't have to turn there, but there are seven attributes of the Holy Spirit, and when you get filled up with God, these will be in your life. He's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ here, and he said, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. You know, when you get filled up with God, you're going to have the Spirit of Christ in you. You remember James and John, and they got mad at some people in the Bible, and they said, Lord, said, let us just call fire down. We'll just, we'll just kill them. And Jesus said, you know not what spirit you are of. Now, our job ain't go around, well, if I was God, I'd just do this. Well, I'm glad you ain't God, Amen. I was pastoring a little church one time. A man come in one morning and he, he said, if I was God, I'd just kill everybody. I thought, well, I'm glad you ain't the Lord. Amen. God's got mercy on people. Amen. We need the Spirit of Christ. That don't mean that we roll over and take everything. No, Jesus got angry when he went in the temple and seen how they were doing. But here's the deal about it. What it does mean is this. We ought to have the Spirit of Christ in our dealings. Can I just say this morning, I'm not trying to be mean or ugly, but it's very sad when you can get lost people to do something for you more than you can a saved person. Or let me put it another way. It's very sad when a lost person has, and you know they're lost, they don't claim anything, and it's very sad when they have a better attitude than the Christian does that goes down to the church and sings in the choir every Sunday. Amen. Now, if you're saved this morning, your attitude ought to reflect that. If you're filled with the Holy Ghost, and I, I admit it, I'm not filled with the Spirit all the time. You're not either. But you know what? Ain't it good to get that fresh oil? Ain't it good to get talking? To, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Amen this morning. All right, so let me quickly give you these. 
He said, the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Then he said, the Spirit of wisdom. Boy, if you're filled with the Lord, you'll have some wisdom about you. The Spirit of understanding, you'll have that. The Spirit of counsel, amen, you'll be able to help other people. And might, that means the power of God. Every preacher ought to want the power of God upon his life. I'm not here this morning to appeal to your intellect. I'm here to, to let the Holy Spirit work on your heart. Amen. The spirit of knowledge. Amen. When I believe you're saved, you're going to know something about the Lord if you get filled with God and of the fear of the Lord. Boy, that's lacking in our day and time. Amen. You know, there used to be a time people's afraid to do. There's certain things I'm afraid to do. You say, well, I'm not afraid to do anything. Well, I am. Just because we're under grace, that don't mean you can live any way you want to live. There's still some things in the Bible. I still fear the Lord. Amen. There's still a God in heaven, brother. Amen. David didn't fear the Lord. We're studying about the life of David in the Sunday school. And by the way, I'll just put a little plug in. If you're not coming to Sunday school, you ought to come. Uh, your Sunday school lessons are great. I mean, I, I'm enjoying this thing to do it on David. Amen. Right now, I love it. Amen. So if you're not coming to Sunday school, find your class and come. Amen. And uh, Brother Don didn't tell me to say that, but I put it in there anyway. It'll be all right. Amen. And, uh, but anyhow, listen, hey, man, I love it, don't you? I love learning my Bible. But you need that fresh oil. Now, number two, not only does it talk about the, the Spirit of the Lord, but then we talk about the Scriptures. Now, this manna is a type of the Word of God in Numbers chapter 11 and verse number 8. We come to this, and the Bible said that they beat it, and they uh, put it in pans, and they baked it, and they did all this kind of stuff. But at the end of it, it said the taste was of fresh oil. It's talking about the Bible. The Word of God is a type of it. That manna is a type. By the way, they gather that manna every day. You ought to read your Bible every day. Now, your Bible is the main book, okay? Now, don't take wrong what I'm going to say here. Uh, I've got nothing wrong with people writing books, devotional books. All that. That's fine. But listen, if you use that, but make sure your main book is the Bible. I was telling a man this morning, I've got thousands of dollars worth of books. You say, where are they? None of your business, amen. I, but I've got thousands of a dollars worth of books. A blind man got books. But let me tell you, that what, you know what my best book is? This Bible, this Word of God. Sometimes I find the Bible sheds a lot of light on those commentaries. I was reading the commentary yesterday, Brother Drake. You know what the man said? He said, that's the wrong translation. Boy, it made me so mad, amen. I don't like that kind of stuff, amen. I love my Bible, don't you? I just happen to believe every word in this King James Bible, every word of it. I believe every dot over the I. I believe every cross over the T. I believe the Bible meant what it said and said what it meant. And I love that fresh oil of the Word of God, don't you? Sometimes I get down, I get lower down than a snake's belly in a wagon rut. And I get low, boy. Amen, I do. Amen, you ever been discouraged? Devil ever told you nobody likes you? Never ever told you nobody wants to hear you preach anymore. I've been doing this for about 40 years, amen. And the devil said, ain't nobody want to hear you anymore. Don't want anybody to hear what you've got to say. And I preach to thousands of people every day of my life. I, 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 the Lord's blessed me. I've been, I'm, I'm heard somewhere on radio every day of my life. And I try to help people. But the more I preach, the more ignorant I think I've become. And, 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 and the more I think I don't really know anything about the Bible. But I love that fresh oil. I still love my Bible. Even if I'm sick or something and I, I maybe can't read it like I should, boy, the first thing I want to do is get back to that Bible. I love my Bible. I love reading my Bible. I love what, by the way, I, I, I agree. You ought to try to read your Bible through every year. You really have. And if you start, now, no matter how you read it, you read it any way you want to. But, uh, but let me say this to you. From Genesis to Revelation, I just read mine straight through. A lot of times. And, and I, it gives you a great picture of the Bible. But the word reading in the Bible means to know again. You know, when you get over there with Daniel, you get in the den of lions with him, amen? When you get over there with Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, you face uh, Nebuchadnezzar in the fiery furnace with him, amen? When you, you can build the ark with Noah and cross the Red Sea with Moses, I mean, you can just get in your Bible. You say, I'm looking for adventure, get in your Bible. You say, I'm looking for a love story, get in your Bible. Man, I tell you what, get in the gospel, see what Jesus did, amen? I mean, just read your Bible, love your Bible, amen? Get some fresh oil every day. Did you know every day that you don't get your Bible out and read it? You're going to knock and smoke somewhere. You're going to say something you shouldn't say. You'll do something you shouldn't. You know why? Because you're not reading your Bible. I'm afraid that we've got a generation of people nowadays they don't read their Bible like they ought to. I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid we go to church as just something that we do or a routine. Let me tell you something. Church is not just something I do on Sundays. I've been doing this now for almost 50 years. I've been in the house of God since my mama got saved in 1975. This is my life. And my life is to help you. I didn't come this morning with some big fancy outline to try to help you or to try to get your attention or make you think I'm a great preacher. I've preached here before and you already know I'm not a great preacher. Amen. 
So if any of you saw this morning, look back and saw the, the wireless pinned on me, you probably thought, oh no, not him again. Amen. But uh, you know, but I love this book, don't you? Now I know people write books and I've got nothing wrong with that, but you've got to watch people writing those books. I mean, Sally writes a book on how to have a happy home. But what Sally forgets to tell you, she's been divorced seven times. But she's wanting to say that book. Uncle Frank's book on 40 ways to raise children. What Uncle Frank forgot to tell you is he didn't have any children. You see, I, you, I can't really help you other than what the Bible says about raising children. This morning. You know why? Because I've never had any. Christy's got one. She ain't got him raised yet. Amen. I, uh, I can't help you in that. I raised my brother. Does that count? And uh, hope he don't watch the Facebook. But anyway, one night I said in the church, I said, my mama raised one dummy and it wasn't me. And he texted him and said, no, but the dummy's listening. Amen. But, uh, but I want you to understand something today that, hey, let me tell you, this Bible's my book. Can I, can I just tell you this? I've got to be, I gotta go move on here. Well, let, let me tell you this. When I was a young man, you know that I've, I, and I never major on it. It's no big deal to me. I fall down steps, fall up steps, sit in people's laps, pray when I ain't called on, probably preach a time or two when I wasn't asked. And, uh, you know, being blind has its advantages and its disadvantages. Amen. I've drove trucks off in ditches and we won't get into all that and hit trees and everything else. But uh, don't worry if there's any police officers in here. I don't drive now. Amen. I got right with the Lord and gave my keys up. But, uh, but, but here's the deal. I want to tell you something. Uh, when I was a young man, and uh, my mama, I, I found it the other day. A little black back Bible that my mama bought me when we first started going to church. And uh, 1978, I got saved. I hadn't had that Bible about three weeks, and I got saved. Only bad part is I couldn't read the Bible. It's such fine print, I couldn't read that Bible. And a year or two went by, and we had a, a, a new pastor that came into our church, and he hadn't been there about a week or two. And one Wednesday night while the choir was singing, I don't know why I wasn't in the choir, because I used to sing in the choir at 12, 13 year old. I sure did. And I don't know why I wasn't in the choir, but I was sitting over there. And the preacher came in, and he had something in his hand, and while the choir was singing, he said, Ricky, he said, uh, do you love me? And I, there's a new preacher, you know, and, and I, I liked him. He, he's well enough. And I said, yes, sir. And he said to me again, he said, Ricky, do you love me? The second time, and I said, yes, sir, preacher, I do. And the third time he said to me, Ricky, do you love me? I was about to get where Peter was. I thought, where's this going? Amen. And uh, I said, I do, preacher. And he looked at me and handed me the first giant print Bible that I could ever read. I looked up in the corner of that Bible. It said $15. I thought, well, Lord, I ain't got the money to pay for that. And I said to him, preacher, I'll pay you for the Bible. He said, no, sir. He said, the pay for the Bible is, son, you read a chapter a day. He's talking to a 13, 14 year old boy. You know what I began doing? A mama began helping me read my Bible. And I began reading that Bible. And as I said, I crossed the Red Sea with Moses. I built the ark with Noah. I mean, I got in there, brother. I mean, I went through the trials of Job. I mean, I went through it. And you know what? Uh, before long, I began reading on my own. And I began studying the scriptures for myself. And so about the last 40 years, I've been reading and studying this blessed Bible. And you've come too late to tell me my Bible ain't true. Or you've come too late to tell me there's a different version or there's different something else. There's nothing else. Amen. I'm going to stick with this old book. It's got me where I am. And it'll keep me where I'm at. Amen. And I need it every day. I need fresh oil from the Word of God. I saw a track one time. A little boy was going off to college. And he had a big stack of books about that high. And he dropped one right out of the middle of the stack and the track showed the picture. And it said, one book won't matter. But you know what the book he dropped? Was the Bible. God help us in America. Did you know that in 1803, Thomas Jefferson was the president? I know some of y'all probably remember that. I think Bill Cook was alive then. And some of y'all were. And, uh, but anyway, I'm kidding you, Bill. But uh, did you know what? You know what? Uh, now I'll really get a thump on the head from Bill. Bill looks so innocent, don't he? He goes around thumping everybody on the head. He's just so quiet and innocent. He's not innocent, I'll tell you that right now. But uh, he's my buddy. But did you, know that, uh, did you know that Thomas Jefferson used, now listen to this, Thomas Jefferson was also not only the President of the United States, but he was superintendent of the Washington, D.C. school system in 1803. And do you know what he introduced as the textbook for the Washington, D.C. school system? The King James Bible. 
Did you know the Continental Congress in the 1780s printed Bibles for the public school system? And now it's sad. I appreciate the work that these folk are doing in the schools and uh, Brother Ovager and, and these others with the Good News Clubs and everything they're doing in the schools. But it is a sad thing that our schools have come to that, that we have left the, the Bible when it used to be uh, 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 in our schools and, and where the kids could readily get our Bible. And now we have to bring it in like a third world country, you know. Not long ago, my home church was involved in this project. There was a 500000 half a million dollar project to get Bibles into the nation of Grenada. Little island of Grenada. Some of you may remember that. Ronald Reagan had it invaded in, in the early 1980s and liberated it. And, 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 and Reagan is a, a godly nation. And as they brought the Bibles into the schools down there in Grenada and some of the men from Tabernacle went down and, 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 and some of the others helped with that project. Brother Dean, some others did. They went down in there. And uh, as they went down there, the, the, the uh, administrator over the public school system would be the equivalent of our Secretary of Education. Uh, he said to them, he said, there's only one requirement for you getting these Bibles in our schools. And they said, okay, what is it? And we'll try to meet it. He said, all the Bibles must be the King James Bible. We want that in our school system. God bless the nation of Grenada. Amen. I wish America would say that again, don't you? You know what we need? Some fresh oil. You know what you young people need? You say, I'm 12 year old. You need some fresh oil from the Bible. You say, I'm 16, I'm 18, I'm 20. You need the Bible. You say, I'm 25. You need some fresh oil from the Bible. You need to start reading your Bible every day of your life. Read your Bible. It'll change your friends. Amen. It'll put some fresh oil in your life. Fresh oil is the Holy Spirit. Fresh oil is the Bible. Amen. Now, by the way, you know this is a different Hebrew word here in Numbers for the word fresh than it is in Psalm 92. In Psalm 92, it means green and flourishing. But here it means this. It means juice. That's literally what it means, juice. You know what that means? It was, a, it was a, these uh, wafers, these, that manna tasted like pancakes. It was uh, wafers made with honey. But you know what juice does for you? If, you? if any of you got a juicer at home, I love natural juice. I like to take fresh tomatoes and put carrots with them and juice that and drink it. I tell you, you get a boost. That'll do more for you than that uh, energy drink. What's it called? A uh, Red Bull or whatever that stuff is. I mean, listen, that, that natural juice will help your system. Did you know that? Can I tell you right here's my juice every morning? This right here is what gets me started every morning. I don't know what I'm going to face every day. And uh, you say, oh, preacher, you don't face anything you don't know. You ought to follow me around for a day. You don't know what I deal with. Amen. But I'll tell you this, the Bible will get me through. Amen. The Word of God, when you're going through the fire, when you go to the doctor and you get a bad report, I'll tell you right now, you may not, you may not understand that, but you can lean on this blessed Bible where Jesus said, I am with thee always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. You can lean on that book. You can lean on this book. It says, I'm a very present help in trouble. Amen. You can lean on that. You can lean. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod, that's the type of the word of God. And thy staff, that's the type of the Holy Spirit. Uh, thy rod and thy staff, they shall comfort me. You know what my comfort is? The word of God, fresh oil. I need the Holy Ghost. I need the Bible. You want to live for God in this world and in this day and hour, which we, I know that we're living in a modern day. You say, preacher, things ain't the way they were. I understand all of that. But I tell you, he's still the same God. And we need a touch of God on our services. We need a touch of God on the choir. Not that you don't have it. You already do. But I'm just saying, we need that every day in our lives. Church, don't ever lose that. I appreciate this church. I really do. I, I, I watch more than you think I do. Now, I'm blind, not dumb, okay? I want you to remember that. When I, when I pastored churches, people, my members always wondered to me, Pastor, how do you know everything that's going on? Well, I'm blind, not retarded. Amen. I know a few things. Amen. I got good ears. I can hear. Amen. I, I, just, I just listen around here. You know what I hear around here at Fall Creek? This is what I hear. I want to see people get saved. I'm under a burden to see people get saved. I hear that from more than one person here. Let me say this morning, if you wasn't here last Sunday morning, the Holy Ghost of God was convicting hearts. I don't know who you were. I don't know if, if, you're, still, I don't know if you're here today that we're here last week, but I'm telling you this, God was in this place. And what I'm saying to you this morning is this, you have come to a church, and I believe this, and I go in a lot of churches, I'll be in a different church tonight, I'm in church all over everywhere, but you are at a church this morning that if you are not saved, they want you to get saved. And these people will welcome you. They want you to be saved. They want you to come to know the Lord this morning. Nobody wants you to die and go to hell without God. Nobody wants that. And brother, we need some fresh oil on our lives so we can witness to sinners and so that we can get them in the house of God. As our Sunday school teacher said this morning, you won't tell a dirty joke and then turn around and invite somebody to church. 
It don't work that way, ladies and gentlemen. I want, I'm not perfect. I sin every day. But I want that fresh oil in my life, don't you? Now, quickly, let me give you this. Number one, it applies to the Spirit. Number two, it's talking about the Scripture. But number three, can I tell you this? It is a repeated process. Over and over and over again, you must be anointed with fresh oil. Do you know that? You've got to be anointed with fresh oil over and over and over again. Now, David was anointed three times as king. The first time he was anointed, I'm, I'm, I've been doing a study on the life of David on the radio and then teaching in David Sunday school and boy, I ought to know something about David the time this thing's over, amen. I think I preached 34 messages on the life of David. And, uh, but you know, David was anointed uh, when he was a young boy, I, I probably 18 year old, something like that. He was anointed king in front of his brother. Nobody knew about it but Samuel and Jesse and, and, and the people that were present there. He was anointed king that time. Then later in, in uh, 2 Samuel chapter number 2, he was anointed king over Judah. And then later in 2 Samuel chapter number 5, he was anointed king over all Israel. You say, well, what does that mean? Over and over again, every day of your life, you need a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. That don't mean that you get the second blessing or you get something. No, no. But what it means is you need to pray to God. You see, the Lord will only control you as much as you let Him do it. The Lord never forces Himself on anybody. He don't force anybody to get saved. God's not going to throw you down the side ditch and save you. God's not going to force you to serve Him. Did you know that? We got some preachers in here this morning. Did you know, men, God's not going to force you to preach? You can quit anytime you want to. You say, preacher, I can't. You can. You may not live long, but you can quit. You can quit anytime you want to. Amen. Amen. I mean, but the fire will still burn your soul. Amen. I don't want to quit. Do you? I, I want that fresh touch of God. Amen. I, I want to learn more about my Bible. Sure. But more than I want knowledge and all that, more than I want that, I want the fresh touch of God on my ministry. When I preach, I want to see God do something in the hearts of the people. I want the Holy Spirit do the work, not me do the work. I don't want to go to any church and preach so they'll get me back again. No, I'm not interested in that. I never campaign for meetings. I don't get on social media and say, I've got open dates. Will you pray the Lord fill them? That is hogwash and pickle juice. You know what they're doing. They're not praying the Lord fill them. They're wanting some preacher to fill them. Amen. I just want to pray in private and let God open up what He wants to. But I want fresh oil in my life. I want fresh oil in my Bible. Every day, I want fresh oil. In my, and I, I'll know something about the Bible. You know, it's amazing. If you read through the Bible uh, every day, maybe you have a schedule or however you do it. But, but have you noticed that sometimes you will come just to the right verse that you need for that day? You ever notice that? You just need that verse for that day, amen? It's kind of like eating food. You know, they, they beat it in mortars, they baked it in pans. You know, you know the Word of God is, is different. I mean, sometimes the preacher has to get kind of mean. I mean, you know, I've never seen Brother Don get really mean. I believe he could if he had to, amen? But sometimes he, he don't do that. He just kind of uh, expounds the Word of God. There's just different ways of feeding the congregation. You don't like the same food all the time, do you? Now, you know, I, I just, I just, I don't, I mean, I, leftovers are okay, but I don't like them six days in a row, do you? Amen. I believe my wife make me eat leftovers six days in a row if I do it. Amen. And sometimes I just say, look, we need some different food. Amen. But you know what? My wife's the greatest cook in the world. I ain't going to say anything about that. I don't lose my cook. Amen. I tell you what, she feeds me well. You say, how you know? I stepped on the scales the other day and they said, one at a time, please. <laughs> but uh, I'm, just, I'm just telling you this morning, the, you know what? I, I want to be a healthy Christian, don't you? Now I'll tell you this in closing. I have spent a lot of time these days, and we won't get into that, but I've spent a lot of time these days on my personal, physical health. I've had to change everything I do. I mean, everything I eat and all that kind of stuff, and y'all just made me backslide last night over here with all these desserts, and somebody made banana pudding or something. I don't know what it was, but anyway, it's just like angel's food to me. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm about to starve to death, to be honest with you. Amen. This carrots and nuts and lettuce is for the birds, I'm telling you. But, but, I, but, I, but I, have to, I have to change the way I eat. I have to do it. And, and, and I've been real concerned about my physical. But let me tell you something. There's something that I'm more concerned about than my physical health, and that is my spiritual health this morning. I want to be a healthy Christian. I don't know how many more years I've got. I've been saved 46. I've been preaching 39 years. I've tried to serve the Lord. I'm in the radio and preaching in churches, doing just whatever God wants me to do. I even told God today, I'll go to the mission field if He wants me to go. He just give me a place. I'll load up and go sell a house. It don't matter to me. I'll do anything God wants me to do. It don't matter to me. But you know what I want to do? I want to stay healthy in this thing to the day I die. God forbid at the end of my journey that I go to knocking and smoking. You ever seen an engine blowing up, I mean, like a lawnmower engine or a car engine? The, the smell is awful. You know that? 
And let me tell you something, I, I, I don't want to be a stink in God's eyes. I've seen people get down to the end of the way and just wreck their lives. And just, I don't want to do that. I want to stay healthy all the way, don't you? You know, I, I close this, and I, I think he watches the services some. But that dear old man that preaches here some, Brother Barbary, Brother Curtis Barbary, I've never met him but two or three times. What a sweet spirit that old man has, don't he? You know what? I want what he's got. That's what I want. You know what he's got? He's got an anointing of the Holy Ghost on his life. He's got a touch of God. I believe he gets into the fresh oil, amen? And, and that's what I want. I want on my life. I want fresh oil, don't you? Let me say this in closing this morning. Y'all do know what in closing means, don't you? The preacher's got 30 more minutes. But that's, that's not, no. But in closing this morning, let me, let me give you something here. I want you to listen to this. If you're not saved this morning, you don't know the Lord, you ought to be as concerned about your spiritual health as you are your physical. There is going to come a day you're going to die. And as it is upon that a man wants to die, but after this, the judgment, you will die one day. You'll die. And you're going to go one of two places when you die. There is no purgatory. There's no middle ground. You're going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. What that depends on is this. Have you ever asked the Lord Jesus Christ with your heart, not with your head, but with your heart, have you ever asked the Lord Jesus Christ to save you? Realizing you're a sinner, realizing, as Brother Don said last Sunday, you must believe that Jesus Christ died was buried and rose again for your sin. And if you believe that and you ask Him, He will save you. But I want to ask you a question this morning. Do you know the Lord? You say, preacher, there is no way I'm going to walk down in front of that church and get saved. I want to tell you what. Listen, if you won't show enough interest to walk down here and get saved, then you'll probably die in your sin. Amen? But you ought to. And, and by the way, by the way, and everybody loves you. Don't let the devil make you think, well, this, they don't love me because I'm not where they are. No, no, people want you to get saved. Do you realize this church spends thousands of dollars every year on ministries? And what's the goal? Is to get you saved. Not to count a number necessarily. There's a lot of people here this morning. I'm glad I'm blind. Because if I looked out and seen all these people, I would run. Amen? Brother Tommy Shore asked me this morning about this pinned on me. I said, yes, sir. And I said, well, well, what the preacher told me to do was to walk up here and pin it on you. Amen. Scared him to death, I think. But uh, no. But here's the deal. Can I tell you this morning? Can I tell you this? Hey, let me tell you something. We would love it if you'd come and get saved this morning. I have built my life on the solid rock Far away from the sinking sand I have cast my eyes to the home that waits On the banks of the promised land There's a song of grace Stop.